before you start watching this video, please have your worksheet printed out so you can fill it up as we go along and have your textbook or ebook uh, readily accessible to look up information that you might need. Today we're going to focus in on a single organ in the digestive system, the small intestine, and discuss the cells, uh, tissues, as well as proteins that are critical to making that organ function. Before we do that though, let's take a step back to make sure we all understand the overall function of the digestive system. Um, here we have a diagram of a human digestive tract where food comes in at the mouth and waste is eliminated through the anus. Now, in between those two steps, we have overall many changes that must occur. Please pause the video and brainstorm what those changes might mean. There are very many different answers to the question I just posed. The way that I think about the overall function of the digestive system is that food is initially um, broken down, both through mechanical means um, and chemical means to release small molecules that can be uh, readily absorbed into the body. And then finally, waste, which remains within the lumen of the digestive tract, must be eliminated. Each of these general functions can be further broken down into different steps and the mammalian digestive tract in particular is rather complex and has many highly specialized parts. To think about it, um, it might be easier to switch to a simpler organism um, with less specializations. Let's consider the roundworm C. elegans. Here, um, a single worm has been fed very small microbes, bacteria, that have been engineered to express a green fluorescent protein. This is the food that is ingested by the worm. The, um, and it also allows us to visualize the entire digestive tract. Early in the tract, we see breaks where the food is broken down. A harder to see, but still going on as well. We have a long section uh, associated with absorption of nutrients. And finally, we have um, the elimination of waste that occurs at the anus of the worm. Visualizing the digestive system in this simple organism allows us to see very clearly that the uh, entire digestive system is really a tube within a tube. The larger tube is the body of the animal. And within that body, it contains a smaller tube which is the digestive system itself. Again, food can enter at the mouth end and waste is eliminated from the anus. What we're going to focus on, specifically associated with absorption, is a region within the intestine of the worm or the small intestine of a, a mammal that is uh, specialized for absorption. Let's zoom in to see what that uh, tissue that performs the primary function of this um, absorption looks like. In all animals, epithelial tissues separate compartments. In this case, we are separating the gut lumen 
or the um, interior of the inner tube containing the broken down food that has been ingested from the body proper of the organism. Pause the video for a moment and think about what aspects of these epithelial cells are specialized in the small intestine. You may want to refer to um, what, has, what is in your textbook or other references describing epithelial tissues in order to do this part of the exercise. Note that in both the electron micrographs that I'm presenting as well as the diagram that I've drawn, you can see um, these membrane folds that are facing into the gut lumen. These so-called microvilli are critical to increasing the um, surface area over which absorption can occur. In addition, because absorption needs to be highly selective, tight junctions are formed between these epithelial cells to ensure that nutrients have to go through the selective cells before they enter the body. Based on our discussion of um, membrane proteins in previous lectures, you should be able to predict what kinds of proteins are likely to be found within the membranes of these cells in order to explain these functions. A section through the wall of a small intestine shown in picture form here, um, as well as in diagram form, indicates that there aren't just epithelial cells uh, required to perform the overall function of the small intestine. There are additional tissues um, required, such as um, muscle cells, Ner nervous tissue or neurons, connective tissue, specifically um, blood vessels and blood, that are critical to the overall function. Let's take, for example, the muscle tissue. You can imagine that if food in the gut lumen stagnates over the epithelial cells, there is going to be a decrease in the concentration of nutrients and an increase in the, in the uh, concentration of waste products, relatively speaking. Thus, if food stays um, in one position over the absorptive epithelial cells, the efficiency of the absorption is going to be decreased. However, if food is moved efficiently through the digestive tract, through the small intestine, you maintain a higher concentration of nutrients. And thus, uh, keep the absorption going more efficiently by the epithelial tissue. So um, you can think about the neurons in a similar way, since, especially since muscles um, cannot move without the input of neurons. Uh, in addition, neurons are known to be um, able to sense the type of food in the, in the gut lumen and have some feedback uh, to the brain that might affect appetite, for example, or the ability uh, or wanting to, to eat uh, more food. Um, use the same types of logic to think about how blood vessels that are found uh, embedded throughout the, the, um, the 
tract of the small intestine, very tightly opposed to the epithelial cells, might improve the function, the absorptive function of this organ overall. To see if you have a strong grasp of how cells and tissues work together to maximize the function of a particular organ, think about a different organ and see if you can use the same kinds of strategies. For example, the skin is considered a single organ that has a, a very strong uh, component that is uh, due to the epithelial tissue. Um, go through the same kind of exercise and think about what would the epithelial tissue look like um, and what other types of tissues underlying the skin might it be important for its overall function.